It's aspects of the Suffolk that we enjoy and the reason why we enjoy the county uh, that have directly led uh, to its military history, uh, particularly during the 20th century. So welcome. Uh, welcome to this pilot lecture, which is an introduction uh, to uh, the first uh, lecture series to be held uh, at uh, Suffolk Archives here at The Hold. My name is Dr. John Greenacre. Uh, I'm a lecturer in history at the University uh, of Suffolk, and I'm very pleased to have been asked to deliver uh, the inaugural lecture series this autumn uh, and this um, pilot uh, lecture. Uh, the lecture this evening, uh, we have a live audience in the wonderful uh, auditorium in The Hold. Uh, this is the first time I've lectured in front <clears throat> of a live audience for six months. Uh, so it's very exciting and a little uh, nerve wracking uh, as well. It's also being live streamed. So welcome if you're sat in the comfort of your own home or elsewhere watching this live. <clears throat> and it will also be uh, recorded for later uh, consumption. And the same will be, uh, be true for the lecture series uh, in the autumn. So uh, the lecture series is based on a module that I've been teaching third year undergraduates at the University of Suffolk <coughs> for several years now. The module usually spans uh, 12 weeks each of a three hour seminar, um, but you will be pleased to hear that you're only gonna get the highlights uh, spread across eight lectures of about 45 uh, minutes um, at a time. And as you can see by the list here, the lecture series begins in September, excuse me, <coughs> begins in September uh, and will run through to December 2021 and covers many aspects of conflict and warfare in the county, uh, including uh, uh, attack and defence on civilians, the experience of men in the Suffolk Regiment, uh, naval and coastal warfare, uh, the airfields uh, and air forces and uh, industry uh, and society also and, uh, and memory and memorialization. All along the county uh, there were coastal gun batteries of which today we can see very little evidence. There were 14 large caliber gun batteries between Hopton in the north and Langard uh, Fort in the south. And they were interspersed by, by bunkers and pillboxes that stretched in land into what were known as the stop lines um, and um, trenches, fighting positions, uh, barbed wire and, uh, and minefields. And we have to think about how realistic the prospect of this defence uh, was. And we have a very different view of it today because of the legacy that we can see. So when we see isolated pillboxes in the countryside and also from some of the uh, uh, cultural influences we had, such as Dad's Army, and we watched that, we said, well, realistically, clearly, we stood very little chance of, uh, of, of stopping the Germans. But when we look back and look at the defensive system that was actually there in, in more detail and who was there to do the defence, uh, then, uh, then we get a different story. 